Alright, it's time for me to get started on the G-Squad group build. Don't use the good goof. This is the Rambo Rao goof. Go build the Norris Packard goof. Okay, fine. <laughs> What's up people? My name is Liam and welcome to Millennial Model Mayhem. Today I'm going to customize this high grade goof custom. And we're going to paint it like a miniature. I'm doing so because I want to use the goof for the tabletop game Gamma Wolves. I'm also doing this project for the G Squad Zaku Bros group build. But more on that later because now we clacken. That's one thick boy. Gotta save these for later. Forbidden sprinkles. Don't eat them. This kit is pretty mid-tier for a high grade. It's got some cool weapons and a neat grappling hook gimmick, but the pose ability and articulation isn't anything impressive. However, the design of the suit is great, so that makes up for it. Now, let's head to the Gundam Graveyard for some kit bashing. Hi, Dozo. Oh, why thank you, Wing Gundam. Now go back to sleep. <laughs> you too, Astray Gold Frame Amatsumina. You're kind of flimsy. Oops. And I need your weapons. I've had my eyes on the weapons of this kit for a while now because this is actually the second Gunpla kit that I ever bought. And what I want to try and do is use the blade part of this blade gun weapon, as well as some other miscellaneous bits from the bits box, and make it into a new spearhead for the spear that comes with the kit. I'm just using a basic hobby saw that I got from my local store. It gives a bit of a rough edge, but I'm approaching this kit bash like I would a miniature project since this is for a tabletop game so I can afford to be a bit messier than I would if I was kit bashing a regular style of gunpla, but more on that later. And now that the blade of one weapon has been reforged into our new spear tip, it's time to start modifying the other bits so we can attach this new spear tip to the shaft. And throughout this entire kit bashing process, I'm basically winging it and just kind of seeing what is close to fitting together and then hacking, sawing, clipping, and filing with the sturdy metal files, not the sanding sponges, until things fit together. Oh, and also I used some plastic card to kind of fill the gaps so that the spearhead would sit in the middle there. And to tie the spear together, I ended up sawing the barrels off the one weapon and kind of putting them there to create a better transition from the spearhead to the shaft. And that looks like a successful spear to me, so we're gonna clean that up later and move on to the next kit bash part, which is gonna be the head. Only adding one extra bit here, I just wanna make his little horn there look even more badass. So I just found this random bit, which I think came from the Omegamon kit. And we're just gonna carve a nice curve into that so it'll fit on the head and glue it on, simple as that. Next, there were some slots on the back of his skirt that I wanted to cover up with a couple more miscellaneous bits. And all I had to do was modify the parts till they were flat and then glue them on. 
Next up on the kit bash is adding some more thrusters to the backpack. I'm using this light green piece as the main extension, and to fill the gap at the top there, I cut up some thin flexible plastic card. Then to go along with the big middle thruster, we're adding one more on each side. And then to finish it up with a little flare, we're carving up these armor pieces a bit and adding them as cool little rudder things. On the right arm, we're using just one leftover bit from God Gundam. And we're just gonna add that so we can have a little bit of extra armor on his spear wielding arm. For the left arm, the Gatling shield is pretty cool, but I do have other plans for those bits. So I'm gonna take some polycaps, glue them into the barrels here to make it look more like a missile launcher. And then I wanna flip the shield around. So we gotta modify it a little bit for that. And then we're just straight up gluing all these pieces together. I'm recklessly gluing everything together because I'm not gonna be disassembling like I normally would for Gunpla. And also for pieces like the spear I made, I kind of have to glue the hand in place for him to be able to hold it up. And for the leggies, they were already very beautiful and curvy, so I only wanted to change them a bit. So with a combination of plastic card and some spike bits, I added a little stylish flair to those legs. The plastic card was to fill in those gaps that were a part of the spike pieces, and I think it worked out pretty well. All right, everything is just as janky as I like it, and the kit bashing is complete, so it's time to clean up. I'm using my files and working my way up to high grit sanding sponges to get those nice and smooth, as well as using some plastic cement to fill gaps, pretty standard technique. And on the areas that really need it, I'm getting really fancy and using the 2000 and 8000 grit sanding sponges. Before I move on to the painting phase of the project though, I have to put them through a couple different poses and think really hard about which one I like best because we're gonna be gluing this pose in place. Excuse me, is that heresy I smell? Wait, I can explain. The main reasons why I'm doing this is firstly because it needs to be mounted to a base for the rules of the game and it's gonna be handled a lot so I want it to be sturdy. Also, I'm using really fragile acrylic paints, so any moving parts would just further increase that risk of paint chipping. Also, your Gundam, your way, my model, my mayhem. <laughs> okay, time to get priming. This is the only stage of the project that I really need to airbrush on, just cause, you know, everything needs to get primed, and you might as well do it all in one go. However, I remembered that I had this homemade dark silver mix I made with some acrylics a while ago, so I decided to use that up and give the metallic details a nice base coat to work off of later. Okay, so first thing we're gonna brush paint is the base. So over a layer of gray primer, we're taking our P3 coal black and using some masking tape to hastily start sketching out the pattern we're gonna do on here. And once I have a good outline for the pattern I like, we're gonna start filling in the gradients. As you can see, this isn't the traditional approach to basing for a model, but I wanted to think outside the box a little bit. The main color of the gradient is gonna be this nice teal called Meridius Blue from P3, so we're blocking that in next. And the final color to be featured in this gradient is Arcane Blue from P3. At this point, the base definitely looks a little bit like hot garbage, but that's okay. We're gonna be putting many more thin coats of paint on this to make it look real pretty. Once the gradient is blocked out, we gotta go back to the main color and start tidying up. The main color is also gonna be the foundation for the outline at this point. And my main rule for the gradient is to not have the dark areas be next to the dark areas. So I basically flip the gradient every time I move on to a new section determined by the outline. And once the outline is tidied up, we go back to each of those colors of the gradient and just give it another coat so we have a nice solid base. Next comes probably the most tedious phase and we're gonna need the help of our friend Glaze Medium. Take a look at my WAP here to see how I'm blending the three colors together. And now from here, I just keep glazing on thin layers and building up that nice smooth gradient. It definitely took a few passes to get a result I liked, and that involved a lot of just going back and forth through the color gradient, tidying up areas that I felt needed a better transition, and just kind of winging it and eyeballing it like I always do, you know me. With this flamboyant concept for a base, I kind of wanted to evoke like a Tron vibe, or maybe like 
the Gundam was on a character selection screen and some sort of video game and this is kind of the like Digimon cyberspace that they exist in. And as you probably saw from looking at the thumbnail to this video, the goof itself is going to be pretty aggressive with the amount of gradients on it, so I need the base to complement that. I want to be able to put this piece down on the gaming table and draw eyes from across the room. I thought of some of my favorite mecha anime and wanted to evoke feelings of Shikara. as well as and Come on Liam, use that meme last video. Pathetic. After the gradients are done, we go back to the Meridius Blue to tidy up that main outline one last time. Then we mix in some white and start painting a thinner line inside the outline to get a little mini bonus gradient. And to finish up the base, I go back to the black primer and just really carefully paint the rim. Now it's time to get all the base colors on the goof itself. Starting with some game color gunmetal, we're gonna hit just the raised areas of all the metallic details I airbrushed earlier, and then I threw a quick black wash over those metallic parts to shade the recesses a bit. Next, I'm grabbing my favorite dark blue, because despite building the Norris Packard goof, I'm basing my color scheme off the best boy Ramba Rao. And in order to get a nice smooth coat, I am doing two thin coats of these colors. Once the night blue is done, we go back to our black and block out the black sections. I went with my own style when it came to the color separation because I do like the original goof, but I would rather have a bit more black. And now that I've got some solid base coats all across the model, I'm gonna fully assemble it and glue it to the base. Obviously, I've gotta be really careful when gluing these painted pieces back together, so I'm only gluing the parts that I think will have a risk of moving while I'm painting. And this is all a risk I'm willing to take, because it would be challenging to get into all the nooks and crannies to get the base coats on while this was glued together already. And if you do damage some of your work, you know, you'll just have to go back and fix it. Before I move on to the next painting section, I'd like to talk a bit more about that tabletop game, Gamma Wolves. This is a miniatures agnostic game, which means you can play with whatever models you want. And I've definitely seen people online playing this game and using Gunpla. The first project I did that was inspired by the mechanics of this game was this Grey's Kit Bash, which I had a ton of fun doing. And because this video is about painting, I'm not going to go into detail about its weapon loadout and all that. But if you want to get technical and crunch those numbers, hit me up in the comments section. This project was also an excuse to test out this style of painting that was heavily inspired by one of my favorite painters, which I'll get into a bit more later. If the author of Gamma Wolves, Mr. Barker, happens to be watching, thank you for creating such a cool game to use my gunpla with. Alright, back to painting. I'm grabbing one of my most nostalgic blues, Citadel's Enchanted Blue, and we're just doing a real basic edge highlight over all of the blue armor. This blue is also going to be the main color for our gradient, so eventually we're going to go back to that good old glaze medium and start building up the gradient just like we did on the base. It takes a bit more patience and attention to detail this time though because we're working with far more edges and far more curves. I wouldn't recommend this style of painting if you aren't a fan of working with a paintbrush because it's a long process and it takes multiple layers, etc. But if you do enjoy working with a brush, this is the perfect chance to just get into that zen state and let the paint flow. And as I work my way up the gradient to model color sky blue, I'm gonna pat myself on the back for remembering to paint the base first, because it's essentially the perfect warm up for doing all the gradients on the armor. I'm following the same rule as I did with the base, where I don't want the dark colors next to each other, but this time instead of using the outline that I drew onto the base, I'm using the outline of all the edges of the model. But with all that being said, I'm definitely still winging it, and I don't know if I'm following all the rules for shadows and highlights properly, I'm just kind of following the muse of the brush and slapping paint all over. Look, there's a reason I use the term model mayhem. Once I'm satisfied with the ridiculous amount of gradients I've painted on this thing, I gotta go back and tidy up those edges, starting with an edge highlight that's enchanted blue mixed with a bit of sky blue. 
Then for the next pass of edge highlighting, we move on to pure sky blue, where I'm starting to focus more on only the edges that would catch the light. Then we mix in some white into that sky blue for the final edge highlight, which is only really focusing on the corners and intersections where the highlights would be the brightest. The process for painting the black is very similar. We start with a fairly thick edge highlight of coal black because there's no aggressive gradients on the black parts. And then just like with the blue, we slowly mix in a bit of white and work our way to smaller lines of edge highlighting. But the blue is the main color, so I don't spend too much time stressing out over the black sections. Just a basic edge highlight is good. All right, we're so close to the end. Next, we're gonna paint the weapon and the obvious complement to blue is orange. So let's make this a hot glowing orange spear. Off camera, I just put some gray surface primer on here so I wouldn't have to paint orange over black and make it take 200 layers. The thrusters on the back are also gonna be glowing orange. Once that orange layer is complete, we're doing yet another edge highlight all over this sharp spear. And then guess what, another gradient. This one's not as complicated as the armor. It's just basic yellow at the top, orange at the bottom, separated by the edge highlighting. And the back thrusters are getting a similar gradient treatment, which is essentially the same process that I used for painting the glow effects on my Red Bull God Gundam. So if you want to know more, you should check out that video. And just like I did in that video, we're finishing off the glow effect with an orange glaze to the surrounding area. To finish off the weapon, we're going back and doing another yellow edge highlight just to tidy up the line. And then just like with all our other edge highlights, we're mixing in a bit of white and hitting just the intersections, corners, and such. And last but not least, we're going to paint the remaining details red, starting with good old P3 Sanguine Base. Apply a couple thin coats as a base, and then we're going to switch over to P3 Scorn Red, and also apply a couple thin coats. Then after that, I'm mixing in just a little bit of that yellow from before for a basic highlight, followed by just a little streak of white. And then we put a red glaze over top of everything to tie all the highlights together, as well as to add that subtle glow effect, the same way that we did on the backpack and the spear. Before I add some matte varnish and move on to the glory shots, I have to give a shout out to the painter whose techniques inspired me. Snasuke paints a variety of models from Gunpla to Warhammer, and her techniques really opened my eyes to what is possible with hand painting, so I highly recommend checking out her work. Snasuke san, anata wa subarashi gaka de ari kyoshi desu. Takusan video o sukute kurete arigato gozaimasu. <laughs>this project was to have a really vibrant game piece that would dazzle my opponents on the battlefield, and I'd say that I succeeded. Despite the process being fairly tedious and time-consuming, I still had a ton of fun painting this goof. And now that I've got the Gamma Greys next to the Gamma Goof, they just look so styling together. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this project was part of a group build with the G-Squad, so allow me to present some of the fine work of my fellow Zaku bros. I'm very proud to be working alongside these fine builders, so if you're looking for more Gunpla content, look no further, their links are all in the pinned comment. And yes, I realize it's ironic because... Zaku wa chigao no da yo! Guess yours is the good goof now. There you have it, my Gamma Goof. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process. Thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks goes out to DJR for his voice acting talents. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions for me, please leave them in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to annihilate those like and subscribe buttons. I'm definitely not going to do all of my gunpla like this, because I still enjoy being able to change poses sometimes, and I do have all that G-paint. That's all for now. Next time on Millennial Model Mayhem, we'll feature a different kind of clack.